Part 3. Investigating Wind Farm Costs and Monthly Variation in Electricity Rates In the previous parts of this video, I've used the Virtual Energy Analyzer to quickly assess the financial viability of a wind farm in Newfoundland and then examine the choice of parameters in the Energy page of Red Screen Expert. Now I'm going to look at how I can specify costs in more detail, determine the conditions under which the project might be profitable, and see how a monthly analysis differs from an annual analysis. Until now, I've used the initial costs and O&M costs suggested by the Virtual Energy Analyzer. These are taken from the cost database. Let's go to the Energy page and look at this database. The cost database is accessed by clicking on the dollar sign icon beside the initial cost or O&M cost cells. For the initial costs, for example, it shows the cost per kilowatt of wind capacity as a function of the size of the project. For 100 megawatts, the size nearest that of this project, the value is 2100 Canadian dollars per kilowatt. This is the currently selected value and it is highlighted in yellow. This project is being proposed for a very windy site and this is reflected in the choice of turbine. The blades are relatively short for the size of the generator and the tower is less than 100 meters in height. This might reduce turbine costs, although this would need to be verified through discussions with the vendor. Let's speculate that costs would be 10% lower than indicated in the cost database. I can apply the 10% reduction directly in the cost database. I select User Defined in the cell under the Table of Costs and this allows me to enter an adjustment factor. I'll put in 0.9. I see that the costs in the table change. Now I click on the Paste Data button and the updated cost is copied to the Energy page. The O&M figures in the cost database can be similarly modified. I'm going to reduce the annual O&M by 5%, but later, on the cost page, I'm going to make an allowance for out-of-warranty repairs late in the project lifetime. Now if I turn to the cost page, I see my initial costs and O&M costs copied to the initial costs and annual cost sections of the Level 1 analysis. This is fine for a quick analysis, but eventually I might want to look at these costs in detail. I can do this by selecting a Level 2 or, if I want the maximum amount of detail, a Level 3 analysis. You'll notice in the Level 2 or 3 analysis that while the O&M costs are carried over from the Energy page, the initial costs are not. There is a good reason for this. The initial costs on the Energy page are for all costs lumped together. In Level 2 or 3, we may want to break down these costs by component, so it doesn't make sense for RetScreen to insert the total lump sum of initial costs. Rather, RetScreen provides us with the project capacity. For those costs that we want to lump together, we can enter a cost per kilowatt of capacity that will be multiplied by the wind farm size. The remainder of the costs we can specify in line items. Let's say that we want to lump together all the initial costs of the turbine, including tower, rotor, and nacelle. I'll assume that these amount to $1,200 per kilowatt, I enter that figure beside the 81,000 kilowatt capacity of the project. The product is a bit under $100 million. Perhaps the project will require a 10 kilometer transmission line costing $100,000 per kilometer and a $2 million substation. I'll enter those costs in the transmission line and substation cells. Then, under balance of system and miscellaneous, I select Specific Project Costs for Wind Turbine Installation. This opens two lines, one for foundations and the other for turbine erection. These project-specific cells are only available in a Level 3 analysis. For both lines, I enter 27 as the number of turbines. For the foundations, I assume $500,000 per foundation. For turbine erection, $70,000 per turbine. For transportation, I could enter the cost per turbine, but I'm instead going to put the cost for transportation for the entire project. I'll assume that it is $4 million. Remember, you can add your own line items. I'm going to add one 
for crane rental, costing $3 million. I'll add another, miscellaneous, to cover construction and commissioning costs not included elsewhere, for $2 million. So far, I've included costs that could occur during construction and commissioning, but there are other expenses too. Going to the top of the cost page, I'll enter $3 million for a feasibility study, $6 million for development, and $3 million for engineering. Finally, at the bottom of the initial cost section, I'll enter 5% for contingencies, as might be typical in an analysis for a wind farm. Also, I'll include the costs for short-term financing. This refers to the interest paid on money borrowed while constructing the project. Because the wind farm is not yet operating, during construction it cannot serve as collateral. Due to the additional risks, the interest rate will tend to be higher. Therefore, while I've entered 5.5% for the debt interest rate on the finance page, here I'll assume that I have to pay 8% interest over a 12-month construction period. Altogether, this works out to just under $150 million for initial costs. Keep in mind that this is a hypothetical project and these line item estimates may not be accurate for a given real world project. Earlier, I reduced the annual operation and maintenance costs by 5% from the level suggested by the Red Screen Cost Database. In a manner parallel to the partitioning of total initial costs into line items, one possible justification for such a reduction might be the separation of operation and maintenance costs into annual costs and major out of warranty replacements that might be expected once or twice later in the life of the project. For example, one might want to budget for the replacement of blades or gearboxes 15 years into the project and keep this distinct from annual O&M. Level 2 and 3 analyses facilitate this through the specification of periodic costs and credits. At the bottom of the cost page, I'll enter a periodic cost for major component replacement, 12 years into the project, costing $20 million. Note that by definition, periodic costs recur, but on a period longer than one year. For example, if the project lifetime were changed to 25 years, a charge equal to the $20 million plus inflation would be included in the annual cash flows for both years 12 and 24. This is evident in the cash flow graphs on the finance page. The finance page shows that our cost reductions have not resulted in a profitable project. One might wonder how much initial costs would need to fall in order for this project to break even. This would be signified by a net present value of zero, or equivalently, an internal rate of return on equity precisely equal to the discount rate, currently 9%. Let's investigate this. First, in order to avoid having to switch back and forth between the finance page and the cost page, I'll open the dashboard. This will float on top of whichever tab I have open, while displaying key results that I choose from a drop-down list. I'm interested in measures of profitability, so I will select financial viability from the list. Now, returning to the initial cost section of the cost page, I will add a new line item. I'll call it Necessary Cost Reduction for Profitability. This will not be a cost, but rather a credit or reduction in costs. I'd like to know how much the per kilowatt cost of the project must fall, so I'll enter 81,000, the capacity of the project in kilowatts, in the quantity column, iteratively changing the unit cost until the net present value reaches zero, I determined that I would have to find a way to squeeze the project costs by $330 per kilowatt in order to make this project viable. Having determined this, I'm going to remove the Necessary Cost Reduction for Profitability line so I don't mistakenly incorporate it into future analyses. Of course, project viability is also affected by the price the project gets paid for its electrical output. I've been using a price of $0.05 cents per kilowatt hour that is fixed year-round. For some projects, the electricity price may vary over the course of the year. 
For instance, in some areas, the price of electricity might be high in the winter and low in the summer. In others, the reverse might be true. How can I count for this in red screen? On the energy page, under electricity and fuels, I currently have a single electricity export rate defined. It is an annual rate, but I can add other rates, including rates that vary by month. By clicking on the plus icon, I can create a new rate. I select Electricity Export Rate Monthly. Now there are cells for the rate during each month. I'll name this rate Winter Peak, add another monthly varying rate, and call it Summer Peak. For Winter Peak, I'll assume that the price is $0.07 cents per kilowatt hour for October through March and $0.03 cents per kilowatt hour for April through September. For Summer Peak, it will be the reverse. RetScreen calculates the annual average rate. It appears to be $0.05 cents per kilowatt hour for all three rates. If I select the text for monthly rates, I see that it is not exactly $0.05. Cents. This is not an error. Although the average monthly rate is exactly $0.05, cents, RetScreen has counted the number of days in each month and determined that, due to variations in the number of days in each month, the six-month period with low costs does not have precisely the same number of days as the six-month period with high costs. Thus, the average rate is not exactly halfway between 3 and $0.07. Cents. Now, when I return to the wind farm parameters, for the electricity export rate, there is a drop-down list with all three rates to choose from. The choice of rate does not make much of a difference, however. Since RetScreen is simply multiplying the annual electricity production by the annual average rate. If I really want to see the influence of the choice of rate, I'll have to do a monthly analysis. This requires changing to level 3. When I open the level 3 analysis, I'm faced with blank cells. Rather than fill out what I just entered for the level 2 analysis, I'll click on the options menu item to copy level 2 to level 3. That leaves only the wind speed to be specified for each month. I don't know what the average wind speed is for each month. First, let me try putting in the annual average wind speed of 9.15 meters per second at 100 meters for each of the months. If I select the annual electricity export rate, the only thing that is changing from month to month is atmospheric pressure and air temperature. Inadvertently, I find myself in the position of being able to see the impact of ignoring the month-to-month -month variation in these variables by toggling back and forth between the level 2 and level 3 analysis. When I count for the monthly variation, the electricity exported to the grid is 283,678 megawatt hours annually. When I don't, it's 283,522 megawatt hours. The difference is less than 0.1%. This shows that using the annual average temperature and pressure in level 2 does not introduce significant errors in the total production on an annual basis. In level 3, I now look at the electricity export revenue when I select different rates. Even though the average rate is essentially 5 cents per kilowatt hour in all cases, and the annual production remains at 283,678 megawatt hours, the electricity export revenues vary. The revenues are more than 1% higher with the winter peak than the summer peak price. What accounts for this? The explanation lies in the monthly table at the top of the level 3 analysis. Because it is colder in winter than summer, the electricity production, ignoring variation in the wind speed, is higher in winter. Electricity export revenues are therefore higher when the time of the high prices coincides with the time of increased production. In this case, that is winter. The Global Wind Atlas does not currently provide monthly values for the wind speed, but this information could be available from either on-site measurements or companies specializing in wind resource modeling. Given that the climate database estimate of the annual average wind speed at 10 meters corresponds closely to the Global Wind Atlas value when scaled by a power law to 100 meters, let's live dangerously and use the monthly values from the climate database instead of keeping the wind speed constant. I'm doing this for demonstration purposes only. 
I would not recommend this level of trust in the climate database wind speeds for a real project. The values from the climate database are shown in the level 3 analysis monthly table, so I don't need to switch back and forth between the energy page and the location page. Underneath the table, I need to remember to change the measured at height to 10 meters. Scrolling to the bottom of the page, I see that with monthly wind speeds, the annual electricity exported to the grid has declined from 284 gigawatt hours to 272 gigawatt hours. But despite this decrease, if I select the winter peak electricity rate, revenues are nearly $15 million annually. In contrast, with the summer peak rate, revenues are barely $12 million for the same annual generation. This makes a big difference. Red screen shows that with the summer rate, the project earns only 4.5 cents per kilowatt hour on average, but with the winter rate, it earns 5.5 cents per kilowatt hour on average. Even with the winter peak rate, however, the finance page reveals that this is not a profitable project. The pre-tax IRR on equity has climbed to almost 6%, but that is below the minimum acceptable return of 9% established by the discount rate. But costs are not the only determinant of project financial viability. In the next part of this video, I'll look at how Rett's Green Expert can permit us to compare different choices of turbine. In particular, I'll look at how using a relatively large rotor and a taller tower could improve the capacity factor. But first, I'll move this project to a different continent.